Hello everyone and welcome to Rad Chat, the multi-award winning therapeutic radio for lead oncology podcast. My name's Jane McNamara and I'm joined by fellow host Norman Joel Anderson. Hi everyone. So here we are at uh, UKIO and we have Marcus with us. Marcus, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, thank you. <laughs> uh, I'm Marcus Jackson. I am chair of the College of Radiographers Board of Trustees and I'm here with a specific purpose today. <laughs> You are, before we get into that, I'm going to throw some questions at you. What is the Board of Trustees? Can you give us a bit of insight into how that runs? Yes. So, um, the Society and the College of Radiographers are two separate but intertwined uh, bodies. The Society of Radiographers deals very much with uh, employment and uh, the union arm also professional issues. The College of Radiographers is very much concerned with education, promoting the patient voice, promoting the profession and research. Everyone always asks that, don't they, between what's the difference between the science and the college? I do think that many members don't really appreciate that there are differences. Yeah. And I, don't, I think even fewer people appreciate that you cannot be a member of the College of Radiographers. Yeah. How did you get to doing what you're doing now? So, I applied to become a trustee of the board, uh, of the College of uh, Radio Office Board of Trustees uh, initially. And prior to that, I'd been doing quite a lot of work on the accreditation as an approvals board, and I sat on the, the editorial board as well. So, I've been quite involved with the college. And a vacancy came up as a trustee, and I thought I could get more engaged with the college and then there was an opportunity to apply to become chair and I became chair. So, What's your professional background? I'm a diagnostic radiographer by background. I've been qualified now for 37 years, which I still can't believe. You don't look you're old enough, 37 years. It's been 40 years since I started <laughs> training this year. So yeah, things have changed. I was going to say, does it blow your mind when you walk around now and everyone's talking about AI and you're like, wow. Well, face, FaceTime on phones. <laughs> <laughs> it's like something from Star Trek. I mean, I think it's just amazing how technology has uh, made things a lot with both therapy and diagnostic uh, imaging over the years. It's yeah. just incredible. All to the patients benefit. Definitely, that's what we're all here for. And if I had a... Uh, legacy I want to leave behind it would be to bring the objective of the college which is to uh, bring or promote patient voice to the group. Yeah. Because I think we do it well but we could do it better because with everything we do we can do it better. Yeah. So Marcus we currently have a workforce shortage um, within therapeutic and diagnostic radiography um, and as a result of that it's an absolute privilege to be able to say that there is a Valerie Carr Award. Would you like to kind of go into detail about what that actually means and entails? I would be delighted. So, we were very fortunate at the college in that we had a uh, legacy awarded to us, uh, but that legacy had a very specific purpose, and that was to support potential therapeutic students in England and in Wales to embark on a degree programme uh, but the, 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 the legacy funding funds all of the fees during that programme. And it's specifically targeted at uh, system practitioners or those that have done a degree prior to wanting to become a radiographer and just don't have the funding. And those colleagues that want to do that usually find themselves in, in situations where they have family and without this funding being available, it's just not a possibility. So it's a wonderful, wonderful scheme. We, uh, we've had um, four students that have now started their programme. We're now in the third year. The interest is, is, is growing. It's growing year on year. The last count, which was in, at the end of May, we had uh, over 60 uh, expressions of interest. Right. So we need to convert those expressions of interest into applications. Yeah. Uh, we, have, we can award up to five awards every year 
So we'd like to increase that two to five if we can. The closing date for applications is the 30th of September this year. All the information is on the College of Radio Defence website and do contact us if you need more details. Perfect. So for any higher education institute, for anyone doing outreach work, this is definitely something that you should have at the forefront of your oh, mind. Oh my goodness. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And it is such an amazing opportunity because this will improve probably the quality of life of the students that are doing it, but also it could potentially ensure that someone's doing this degree and entering a profession that they wouldn't ordinarily have been able to do. Yeah, it, it provides an opportunity that wouldn't be there. So I would implore all HEIs out there, all clinical colleagues, please do raise awareness of the Valerie Carr Award. What's the feedback been from anyone who's had it or has gone through the process? Well, we've only had the four students so far. They've all been absolutely delighted uh, at the, that they've been granted the award and they, they're, they're now pursuing their career of their dreams, which is wonderful. Uh, in terms of how they're getting along, we do monitor their progress on their programmes. They're all doing exceptionally well. I have to say the quality of the applications has been absolutely superb. You get a real sense of, of the, the, the compassion and the real desire to pursue a career in radiography. That's apparent in, in the applications that we've had. We just one more. And so if someone is going for the Valerie Carr Award, can they get help with their application? Yes, we provide quite a detailed uh, guide right. to the process and the application uh, and, and, and ultimately how decisions are made and that goes through every single step of that process. So, but it, uh, as I said earlier, if, uh, if uh, potential applicants want more information, just contact the college and we'll happily provide that. And I'm going to put my hand in the ring there that if anyone is listening to this and thinks they are eligible, and they want the support, um, Numman and I are happy to help and support people that's, doing that's, that. That's absolutely wonderful. <laughs> Numman's now going, oh my gosh, but I think it's I think it's really important. It's very valuable because it's, it's helping people who may never have considered going into, like, into learning or a scientific job as well. It's just opening up more opportunities for people that don't normally get them. Well, it's taking away one of the barriers, and that's the financial side of it, which is huge. Yeah. Because if you've got life commitments, yeah. it's just not yeah. possible. Um, you know, in, in, in 2017, we're not getting too political, but there, <laughs> there was a, a change in, in the funding. Interestingly enough, we, in HEIs, we didn't necessarily see a drop in student applications. In fact, we saw an increase. But what we did see a drop in applications for mature students. Yeah. And that's because that barrier exists. So this is a small way of trying to address that barrier. Can I just confirm, Marcus? Yeah, people eligible for the MSc and the M uh, no, BSc. It's just it's a uh, BSc. Okay. Yeah, so even if it's a pre-registration MSc, it's still it's, yeah. Okay. Thank you. I think that's that's good to know for anyone who's maybe sharing that information. From okay. your career so far, can you end the podcast with any top tip for anyone listening? Apart from apply for the Valerie Carr Award. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> ah, top tip, I would say uh, engage with your uh, profession, you'd expect me to say engage with the Society <laughs> College of Radiographers, you know, make good use of the resources that are out there, um, but just enjoy your career because... As I said, when I started this podcast, it doesn't seem like 37 years ago <laughs> I started mine, so it goes so quickly. Um, and, uh, you know, we've got a fantastic workforce out there. We just need more. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much. We'll share the link alongside with the podcast, so please do check it out. Um, and again, please share within all of your networks. Put posters up, go out to schools and colleges, think about putting it on your social media, Put it on your email signature. There's endless ways in which you can share this information, so please do try and help. Thank you. Uh, can, I, can I just say one thing? One last of thing? course you can. I just want to thank these wonderful people at Rancher for giving us the opportunity to do that. Oh, so on behalf of the college, thank you very much.
to Marcus, get a client. <laughs> actually, you've reminded me, Marcus. See, this is where this is where our podcasts go because they go on for hours. Um, so, in my will, I have some money that I leave to Society College of Radiographers. Um, if other people wanted to do that or have a legacy exactly like the um, Valerie Carr, how do they do that? Is it easy? It's very easy. Okay. Um, I, I, I don't really have the knowledge of my fingertips. Okay. Um, can we do something post? Yeah, podcast absolutely. Where we, can provide that? we can have you on, Marcus, and we can do a full episode okay. around. Support. Not necessarily me, but um, if, if I find out that information, I can, I can pass it. Perfect. On. I don't want to give any disinformation. Thanks Thank very you. Much. Cheers.